Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Paul Garner. I'm the online campus pastor for Audacious Church, and you're about to watch an incredible message recorded at our Manchester campus in the UK. If you want to know more about our church, visit audaciouschurch.com. But don't forget, you do not want to miss out on the incredible content that we are bringing to you. So make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Good morning. You all look amazing. I haven't seen some of you for years. Hey, COVID. COVID kept me away and now I'm back. So <laughs> uh, it's good. Good to be here. And you can take your seats. Don't take them anywhere. They were paid for. Uh, well, any Manchester United supporters in the room? You know, in the prayer time, Foz, Pastor Foz was um, there and I turned to him and I started praying for him. And he thought it was something powerful that I was praying for and I was saying, Lord, help him with his disappointment today as the real Manchester win, amen. <laughs> How many know that Pastor Glenn has made me a Manchester, United, um, Manchester City, Manchester City supporter? <laughs> <laughs> I went and saw Bolton play yesterday. There are three people cheering. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> More than City. <laughs> I don't think so. But it's so, so great to be here. How many love Pastor Glenn and Sophie? How many love he's skinnier? I hugged him before and he felt completely different to four years ago. He used to be a lot bigger. And I'm bigger because of COVID, thank you very much. But everything, you know, you blame everything on COVID. The economy's on COVID, every relationship's on COVID, everything's on COVID. Anyway, that's what we do these days. But it's such a joy and honour to be here. This is amazing church. You know why it's amazing church? Because it has amazing people. That's you. Turn to your neighbour and say, you're amazing. Turn to, oh, you say it so nice, you're amazing. Australian, we go, you're amazing, mate. Glyn, Glyn was brought up in like, he was born in England and brought up in Queensland. They speak different in Queensland. It's not English, it's Queensland. And um, it's all the Queens, yeah. Oh, and no, that's the Kingsland now. So, yeah, so it's very cool to be here. I'm just a... Um, enjoying the moment of just looking at you. You know, I've, uh, the thing that I hated about the last three years is you didn't get to hang out with the people you love. And the church should gather together and the sh church should be imparting to one another because we need each other. We need each other. I'm not really good at rugby. Uh, Australia used to be good. Then you got an English... The English team got an Australian coach and uh, you started winning. The All Blacks are not as good as they used to be and South Africa, we don't care. Anyway, if you're from South Africa, I'm on my way there. We have a church there, it's pretty amazing. But in the game of rugby, they have a thing called a scrum. And it, the whole purpose of a scrum is to get the ball and join each other together and bring our strength together to push the ball across the line to score. It's to use what we can do together to defeat the enemy and get a winning score. That's a picture of the church. The church should be a place where we bring our strengths together to carry the ball of victory to defeat the enemy and win on behalf of the team. So I need some volunteers here. Foz, you can come out here. Let me see. John, you can come up here. Do I need to take my hat off? Because you can't see me. Okay, cool. I don't really have really wide eyes anyway, but 
The reason I wear a hat is because I have no hair. And bald people are anointed, by the way. We're getting raptured quicker than anyone else in this room. That's two. I need, I need someone more. Oh, Stu, you're a really strong man. Strong, let me see. What's your name? Rafaro. You're a strong man. Very cool. He's a rugby player. Okay, cool. He knows more than me. Let me see who else. I was going to get a strong man. Glenn, say there. Um, Linz, come on, Linz, up here, Arsenal supporter. Come on, you like getting out in front of people. You like, <laughs> you need to come up here, up, up there. <laughs> Sparky, come up here. There you go. <laughs> Represent the Scottish. Okay, cool. So apparently, in the game of rugby, you need to just get in the line. We'll do it in the line. Don't, don't, don't go too technical on me. They go, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, we'll be praying for you after. Okay, oh, on the line, thank you, very good. Apparently in the game of rugby, they say touch, then they go, what? What's the next one? Engage, and then you push forward, right? So touch, what did you touch? Engage, so come in closer. Push. That's good, go back, because you're gonna run over the side. See, Fozzie, if you listen to me, it would have been good in the first time. Um, uh, <laughs> typical Manchester United supporter. Uh, touch, engage, push. Let's give him a big hand. I need you at the end of the service. <laughs> it's, hey, you gotta fight each other. Okay, yeah, but that's the, the devil you fight. <laughs> Psalm 44 says this, Psalm 44 says this. Do we have it on the screen anywhere, Psalm 44? Through you, we, everyone say, we, say it with a bit of force, we, say it like you hate the devil, we, that's good, we push back our enemies. Now, our enemies are never people, because the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Our enemy, the enemy in our lives is sickness, depression, poverty, lack, fear, insecurity, it says, through you, we push back fear, intimidation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. Next part. I put no trust in my bow. In other words, so many people try to fight a battle in their flesh, in the natural ways. They try to do it in their bow, how they can do it, what I can do. I, my sword does not bring me victory. In other ways, the ways of man does not bring us victory. So many times I've seen people and they get hurt in life and they try to deal with it with a fleshly response where a kingdom response is to forgive. I see people who are in lack and they, they try to work with their bow and their sword, but they're really, they need to operate in faith and so. So my sword does not bring me victory. It says, then goes on and it says, but you give us victory over our enemies and you, God, put our adversaries to shame. Next, verse, next part. In God, we make our boast all day long. It's not in a church name, it's not in an individual, it's in the name of God. The Bible says those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. No individual can save you, no one can heal you, no one can deliver you, it's only one that can deliver you and His name is Jesus and it's in you we boast, in you we boast all day long. You know, the, the God of the West is fame. 
Everyone wants to be famous. You know, we, we worship celebrity. Oh, there's a celebrity, wow, wow. Even in the church, we've created celebrity pastors. <laughs> and I, I, it's good to honour every, uh, every leader, but we never worship them. In church, we should honour everybody. It says this, by the way, when you get before God and you stand before God in heaven, He won't go, well done, you good and famous servant. It says, in God, we make our boasts all day long and we praise your name forever. In God, we boast. But I, I, the title of my message is Push Today and Someone may have heard uh, 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 the an allegory of, of, allegory of uh, uh, push, pray until something happens. The Bible says where two, agree, two of us agree concerning anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. So in this day, we need to join our strength and pray until something happens. Pray until the breakthrough comes. Oh yes, but I prayed once. Keep praying. Pray until something happens. Pray till the breakthrough comes. You know, it amazes me in the Western world how much little do we pray. You know, the greatest revivals aren't in the West. They're actually in Africa, in Asia, in South America. I, uh, my uh, son-in-law, he's Maori, so you can do the huck it to him. And um, he's, he's a powerful guy. He runs Planet Boom, um, which is our youth group. And he married my daughter, so he must be good. I hated him for a while. You know, I tried to bribe my daughter to keep the name Evans. Her name's Walker now. You don't walk away. You, you're, you're an Evans. You're Welsh. Anyway, that's our background. And I said, Amy, if you keep the name Evans... I'll give you more inheritance. <laughs> she said, Dad, we don't know. Um, when I come under my husband, I take his name on. I said, but Amy, he hasn't got any money. <laughs> and she goes, Dad, we don't do manipulation in this house. That's Jezebel. <laughs> I'm like, who taught you that? You? <laughs> well, that's false doctrine. Joking. But my son-in-law and my son just went to LA to a discipleship place and uh, that's where they train their leaders. They live in houses and they disciple them. And, and my son and son-in-law are great men of God, but their disciplines of prayer have been okay, have been solid compared to most you think it was good. But when they turned up there, they were in shock because from 6 a.m., in the morning to 9 a.m., they would pray and read this in these discipleship houses. And they'd pray and read it and, and uh, then they'd do work out in the gym and then they'd work and, and all that. And, and my son-in-law came back after a week and he said, my life has changed. I said, why, why has it changed? And this is how much it changed. He rang my daughter and he said to her, they live in a two-bedroom apartment. She, they said, she, he said to her, get our other room and we're gonna set up a prayer room. And every morning we're gonna pray for two to three hours for a move of God on our generation. She, he said, put, put scripture all over the room. They're 23 years of age. He comes back and he said this to me. He said, he calls me Abba. <laughs> daddy, daddy. Anyway, um, just as a joke, he calls my wife um, Sweetheart, so he's, he, he's got her under his thumb. Anyway, and he's like, he goes, what really got to me is we pray because we want to. Where we were, they prayed because they had to. They, they couldn't survive without prayer. You know, prayer to, to us should be like oxygen is to us. Without prayer... Our intimacy with our God does not come into full effect. And we just had our youth camp 
which they sold out three weeks in, in advance. And, and I went there and the power of God hit that place. There was this one meeting, he says, if, if you're in heaven and you ran, what would you do when you ran into heaven? And all these young people, they got at the back of the room and they ran to the front. And as they were running to the front, the power of God was hitting them and every one of them fell under the power of God, weeping, weeping. Come back and they're praying and praying and praying and praying. So many times we pray once or pray twice. We may have prayed a few times, but I'm here to encourage you. Pray until something happens. Pray until there's a revival in this land. Pray until your family's restored. Pray until that breakthrough comes. Everybody shout, push! Praise until something happens. Paul and Silas are on their way to jail, Acts 16. On their way to prayer, actually. And they were chased around by a girl who was full of demons. And she was saying, these are servants of the Most High God. She was a prophetess who was, uh, you know, was taken by an evil spirit who would prophesy about things in people's lives and, uh, and, uh, and she would make money for her owners and, and she wasn't a Christian prophetess. She was used in the demonic. And, and so... She saw something in them and she was saying, these are servants of the Most High God. My, uh, my comment or my question to you and I is do people recognise that we are servants of the Most High God? Or do we just blend? Do we just fit in? Do we just look like everyone else looks? And as soon as you look different, they try to cancel you. As, tr as soon as you have a different viewpoint called the Bible, they try to minimise you. Hmm. You know, Jesus never cancelled anybody. The only thing He cancelled was sin and Satan. The church should always be about restoration. It should always be about staying together and looking, for the, looking after the hurting, the whole, the disappointed, every person. There should be something that stands out in us. That is counterculture. Romans 12 says, don't conform, don't be conned to be in a formation to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We gotta make sure that there is a fight for our, our minds and our thoughts. We gotta make sure that our thoughts and our minds are lined up with the Word of God because it's a word that will remain. And so there, these are servants of the most high God. After days, they got a little annoyed and they didn't get annoyed at the person. They spoke to the demon and she got set free. And then they ended up in prison, put in jail by the magistrates. Oh, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Sometimes people, things happen in people's lives. And, oh, there must be something because this has happened to them. Maybe it's just a demonic assignment. <laughs> and so they're in prison by use, for using the name Jesus. And there they are. And they have a choice whether to be intimidated or say, no, 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 no. We're going to pray until something happens, but we're going to praise until something happens. And the Bible says at midnight, they begin to sing songs unto God. The, that word God means the Supreme Court magistrate. The little magistrates put him in jail, little M. But the Supreme Court magistrate was seated on his throne. He is the King of Kings. And heaven is there. And the Bible says that God sits on His throne. And the Bible says Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. See, when you praise and when I praise and we have faith, because praise is the, is the, uh, is the, what's the word? Praise is the language of faith. It's the language of faith. I praise continually because my Bible says, let the praises of God be continually in my mouth. Why? Because God wants faith. 
coming out of your mouth because as faith comes out of your mouth, you begin to hear. Faith comes by hearing. So if praise is coming out of my mouth, faith is coming out of my mouth. And so my hearing, now I'm believing. So God has to respond because faith is the currency of heaven. So Jesus is there. And, he, and, and the Bible says He's interceding on our behalf. I reckon what happens is He goes, look, Dad, look, Father, look at Paul and Silas. They're in prison, but they're in faith. The third part of us is on earth, the Holy Spirit. We gotta get Him to move on our behalf. And the Bible says that that prison cell began to shake. But here's the thing I love about the shakings of God. It never destroys lives, it just frees them. Have you ever seen an earthquake? Everything gets destroyed, people in the the earthquake die. But no one died in this prison. Everyone came alive. Everyone got free. Even the jailer got free. Even his family got free. In fact, the ones who probably inflicted the beatings were the ones who who came and soothed the, the, the pain and the injuries that had been caused. The whole family got baptized because they praised till something happened. My mother had depression. It's a long story. She had a thing with a snake in Papua New Guinea where I was born, had a nervous breakdown. And one day God said to her, Praise me in all things. She said, how can I praise you for depression? How can I praise you? She was in a a, a psychiatric home at times. She's a strong lady, but had this nervous breakdown. We had to come back from Papua New Guinea to Australia. She had two children. And she decided one morning with a heavy depression, because the Bible says God gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. She decided that she would get up and praise until something happens. And you get up and say, God, I don't know why I am where I am, but I know You're good and You're good all the time. I know Your mercies are new every day. I know that You are my healer, my deliverer. And she said for the first 10 minutes, it was tough, but something happened, the heaviness would lift. (laughs) Next morning, mum is back in depression. I thought I went to the church meeting and got free. Oh no, I've got to praise until something happens. Oh God, you're good. And it would lift. Next day, depression's back. She did it time and time again for a year. Then in a meeting like this, there was an evangelist who said, the Holy Spirit is here, ready catch. And he goes like this and the whole place falls under the power of God. My mum's drunk for three days in the Spirit. She gets totally set free. When I was a teenager, I would hear her, oh God, I praise you for my boys. I know they're not going well with you at the moment, but I praise you. I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. My brother's a preacher now. His kids are preachers. I'm a preacher. My kids are preachers. Something happens when you praise. What is Planet Shakers known for all over the world? Millions and millions, if not billions of people have sung our songs from Africa. You know what, one of our biggest events we play in is in Nigeria, called The Experience, 800,000 people. We, we were just in the Philippines, sold out four nights in eight hours, 60,000 people. In Korea, 16,000 people. It, we were just in Budapest, 40,000 people. Our music sung all over the world. Where did I learn praise? I learned it from a mother who had been inflicted with depression and she understood the power of praise. Praise until something happens. Everybody shout push. I gotta hurry, gotta hurry. Plant until something happens. Some of us go, well, I sowed once and nothing happened. I got a little plant. If you're gonna see a forest, you gotta keep planting seeds. Keep planting, keep giving, 
Keep planting that gift. Keep sowing that seed. Keep planting because as you plant, you create a seed that then can create a forest. Then when the wind begins to blow, all the seed that's in that forest begins to be blown all over other places and seed is deposited through your continued sowing of seed. Oh, I, I tried tithing once. Yeah, it's like buying a lotto ticket. You, do you have lottos? Lottery? Yeah, well, you know, but sometimes people te treat tithing or giving like, well, I got to give to get. No, you give because you, you love Jesus. God gives to you because He's good. But we sow, we plan until something happens. <laughs> Better hurry up. Position until something happens. <laughs> By the way, Plan Shakers has a huge online, online audience, huge. But God hasn't created us to have church online. Online is an online experience. If you can't get to church, use online. But you need to get in the house of God. Because if Jesus was just about online, he would never come to earth. He would say, just worship me from here. I'm everywhere, but worship. No, he says, I've got to come down. I've never heard of anyone producing children online. <laughs> and we wonder why we're not producing spiritual children. Hmm. You gotta position yourself. You know, when we were in lockdown, Melbourne was the most locked down city in the whole world. 270 days of lockdown over six times. And they would say, you can have 20 people in church. We got 17,000 people in our Melbourne campuses and I, I said, well, okay, we're gonna have 100, 100 services of 20. So we get, we get 2,000 people there. And we'll say, those people don't come next week, we'll get someone else to come next week. They said, on 11.59 on Sunday night, they said, you now can have 150. So on Monday morning at 12.05 a.m., we had a service of 150. Why? Because we decided we needed to position until something happens. You think about Paul and you think about the disciples, sorry, and there they are and Jesus has got thousands following him because people get caught up in the moment and then the thousands follow. But when the pressure comes, let's see who are, who are disciples. The problem, what, the thing, what COVID did for the world is showed what people really believe. Do they really believe in gathering? Do they really believe in God being powerful? Do they really believe that He is our healer? Do they really believe that we're living for eternity? Because if I'm living for eternity, I'm not fearful what I face now because I'm driven and, and have an eternal view. Hmm. So in the moment, in the pressure, people, what's in them comes out and and. There was thousands following Jesus and now there's only a few hundred left after the cross. And they, but they knew that the Bible said, wait for the Holy Spirit. They knew that Acts 1.8 says, you will see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So 120 of them used to be thousands that followed Jesus, but now there's 120 and they're in the upper room and they're positioning until something happens. What are you positioning yourself in until something happens? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're gonna put ourselves in the house of God. We're gonna position ourselves in small groups. We're gonna position ourselves in, in involvement. We're gonna position ourselves because really we are people of humility and humility is I don't come to be served, I come to serve. And in my service, I'm not looking for anything. I'm just looking to be obedient to my God. Well, I'm too busy. Are you too busy to go to that sporting event? Position. I know I'm preaching to the choir. You're here. Position until something happens. Proclaim until something happens. Yeah. In the midst of COVID, all the churches are shut down everywhere in Australia and beyond. And we wrote this song, 
I see the church full again. And we begin to proclaim, fill your church, fill your church, fill your church. I was in Malaysia two weeks ago and one of our um, people that we um, do life with, Pastor Mark Varagis, his church is full. I'm here today, the church is full and seeing God do things all over the place. Our church in Melbourne is full, back to seeing 250 people saved every weekend. We're gonna proclaim until something happens. It might be darkness on the earth, but my Bible says as we shine our light that people will be attracted to the rising of the brightness. I'm gonna proclaim until something happens. I'm gonna proclaim the goodness of God. It's easy easy to tell all the problems. There's inflation, there's this, there's that. But I'm gonna proclaim, God, you blessed me. God, you favoured me. God, you, you, you wanna build your church. You wanna see a revival in the UK. You wanna see a revival in Australia. I'm gonna proclaim the greatest revival that is yet to happen is gonna happen. I'm gonna proclaim it until something happens. Everybody say push. And lastly, I need my scrum. Need my scrum on this line. So singers, give us a bit of space. <laughs> Partner until something happens. Partner until your family sees that breakthrough. Partner until that revival breaks out. Partner, use your strength. I use my strength. You know, lockdown was a tough time for pastors. And your own pastor went through a very tough time. Very, very, very tough time. You would all know about his eye and all that. I remember one day ringing him and he was at a really low place. I remember ringing him and he's an up guy. You know, Glenn's an up guy. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always like, I've never seen him low. It took me 45 minutes just to get into his spirit in that day. And, that's, and there's been days I've been low and he's talked to me. And he brings his strength and I bring my strength. And when I'm weak, he comes and brings his strength. The partnership of the body. The Bible says each joint supplies. And we need our partnership. See if one of these guys gets a ball and he's running and he might be fast and he might be tricky, but if he has a whole opposition against him, they will get him at some stage. But when you have a scrum that says we're together, touch, and they engage, and then they push, something shifts. So today, would you stand with me? This is a prophetic sign what I'm doing here because we need each other. We need the touch of God. We need the touch of people. We need the engagement of our gifts and our talents and our partnership. And then we need a push. Pray until something happens. Praise until something happens. Proclaim until something happens. Position until something happens. Plant seed until something happens and partner until something happens. So I want us, we're gonna do this I know you won't be able to go as far as they do, but I I want us to join our faith. It's a prophetic thing today. And in a moment, I'm gonna say touch and I want everyone just to touch and then engage and I want to just go lock in a little bit. And then when I say push, this is a push for your family to see a breakthrough. Maybe there's sickness in your family. We're gonna gonna partner right now in faith for a breakthrough in sickness for every sick person. So ready, here we go, touch. Engage. (laughs) Push. Now praise God for a moment. Would you praise Him? Yeah. Yeah. Who needs a financial breakthrough? Give me a wave. Give me a wave. You need a fight. Okay, okay. Here we go. This is the Church of Jesus. Touch. We're going to see a breakthrough financially. Engage. (laughs) <laughs> Push! Now begin to give God some praise. Begin to give it some praise. Yeah. Mm. 
Precious Holy Spirit is here right now. You got family members away from God. Give me a wave. You got family members? Yeah, we're going to partner for that right now. We're going to partner for that. Touch. Engage. Now come on, let's give God some praise. Worthy is the name. Come on. season in this season some heaviness or a lack of sleep a lack of sleep you haven't been sleeping very well could you give me a wave who that is yeah many of us many of us we're gonna pray praise position plan proclaim and partner you're not in this alone touch when we get to push, we're going to worship God like we've never worshipped Him. Engage. Push! Now, come on. Let's give God praise. Holy Spirit, I thank You for Your power. I thank You for Your presence. I thank You right now for everything we need is found in You. Provision, health, joy, peace, heaven, on earth, on earth. Come on, come on, come on, we're gonna praise Him. Everybody! I'm gonna praise you with my hands raised high. I'm gonna praise you with my hands raised high. I'm gonna praise you with my hands raised high. I'm gonna praise you with my hands raised high. Hey! I'm gonna praise you with my hands raised high. I'm gonna praise you with my hands raised high. Go, that's good. I'm gonna praise you. So good. You are awesome. Now this, this push in our praise is going to be for a revival. We're going to break open the atmospheres over our cities, over our nations. So from the back to the front, I'm going to praise Him with my hands held high from the left to the right. Here we go. Yeah. 